everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to do a cooking video. I've had a lot of requests to do a video where I make some food. Why are you still making fun of me? This is my second time filming this and he's still making fun of me. <laughs> Today I'm making butternut squash, mac and cheese. It's super tasty. I'm actually gonna try a little bit of a different technique today. Yeah, this isn't the healthiest meal. I mean, we're still eating whole wheat pasta as always, so you're still getting fiber there. We're still eating a ton of broccoli, which is good there. But, I mean, butternut squash mac and cheese. CJ says, still a lot of cheese, not good, and butternut squash isn't that great either. You do get some nutrients, but it's not that great. I think compared to using white yeah. flour and butter, it's not as bad. But anyway, it's really yummy. So if you wanna see how I make it, then please keep watching. Okay, so to cook the butternut squash, I use my Instant Pot. You can do it on the stove or in the microwave. I don't really recommend it because I think it destroys more of the nutrients. So this is just a good way of steaming it. So I actually changed the liner in the Instant Pot because the other one smelled like Mexican food. So I don't want that like scent or any flavors from there to get into the butternut squash. So what I'm gonna do is, pet peeve of mine when there's still time on the microwave. <laughs> so I'm gonna get about a cup of water and put it in the Instant Pot just by itself. And there's this little trivet tool which helps to keep things out of the water because I don't actually want it to be in the water like boiling. Then I have this little steamer basket tool, so that's gonna go right on top of the trivet. As you can see, that's kind of the setup right now. Here's a bag of organic butternut squash. You can get a giant bag at Costco or like little individual bags, Walmart, wherever. This bag is 10 ounces. I am gonna cook the whole thing. So I just pour it right into that steamer basket. I don't have to do anything to it. And I always make sure you switch your valve to sealing, not venting. You do manual, and we're gonna go down to about eight minutes. And so it's just gonna cook. It has to take time to come up to pressure, then it will actually cook it, and then it's gonna come down from pressure, and it'll be perfectly ready to mush. So I don't actually need to puree it. Pureeing it would destroy some of the carbs and make it easier for your body to digest them, which would make your body recognize them as sugar and be able to use the sugar from it. So when it's not super pureed and it's still kind of thick and more just mushed, your body can't use the carbs as well. Is that right? As quickly. As quickly. So you're not absorbing as much sugar from it, which is a good thing. So in the meantime, I'm gonna prepare my broccoli. Definitely not gonna cook it, just gonna get it ready. We always use, oops. <laughs> we always use fresh broccoli, not frozen, and not the like pre-bunched up stuff because it's more expensive that way. And we go through tons of broccoli, as I've mentioned to you guys before. So I'm taking my giant knife and I'm just gonna chop off the ends. not a pro with a knife. I have been afraid of knives for a very, very long time. Definitely gotten better. And I at least know how to chop broccoli. <laughs> Since that's something I have to do every day of my life. Don't laugh at me, you know it's true. Mildly. So again, this is just for the three of us. Um, however large your family is, and I, I, I wouldn't know how much you need to make for them, but. A lot of times we do have leftovers of the pasta, but never the broccoli. So then I put just a little bit of water into a pan. I think it's like half an inch or so. It's not a lot of water. And then I very generously salt it. I really couldn't tell you how much salt I use. I just keep shaking. All right, I do it for about 10 seconds in my mind. That's when I know, like, all right, it's probably good. And then, I, I'm so weird. I'll put the bigger pieces of broccoli at the bottom, because those obviously will take a little bit longer to cook than the small pieces. So I feel like being actually in the water cooks them faster. <laughs> that way, the smaller pieces that cook quicker don't totally just like turn to mush. Doesn't that look so beautiful, that green broccoli? Makes me so happy. 
I honestly might need to cut up a tiny bit more because we are broccoli lovers. So I'm just gonna set this on the burner. Hang out, the burner's not on, we're not actually cooking it. I'm just gonna let it chill in there until I'm ready to cook it. And I'll get the pasta water ready too. So I make our pasta in one of these like giant frying pans because um, it cooks a lot quicker than like boiling water in a big pot. Salt to your pasta water as well. I don't care about it being that salted because you can always add more salt on top. <laughs> this is a pasta we're cooking. Holy organic. I get it from, uh, what's it called? Fred Meyer. And it's got six grams of fiber, so that's pretty dang good. And I will be making the whole box probably. Now comes my least favorite part is grating the cheese. I'm just weak sauce. It's great. <laughs> it's not great. So we're just using Tillamook white sharp cheddar. We don't like orange. Just grating away. Couldn't tell you how much to grate. Just a lot. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really think you need as much as you normally would for a mac and cheese because you're getting good flavor and good consistency from the butternut squash. So you actually, in my opinion, don't need that much cheese. And you can combine cheeses. If you like a bunch of different flavors, I'll add a little bit of Parmesan in it, but mostly just cheddar. What do people normally use in mac and cheese? All right. I think that'll be good enough. Plus some Parmesan. Oh, it smells so freaking good. I love cheese. This is a ginormous brick of Parmesan Reggiano. Is that what it's called? Parmigiano Reggiano. From Costco. Just adds a little bit of, I don't know, what is the nuttiness? Nuttiness? Well, what is a, like, it is. I know, but what's the flavor in like cheddar that's different from this? Different. No, I know, but how would you describe a cheddar flavor compared to like a nutty flavor? Um, sharp. Sharp. Oh yeah. So it's like. I don't really know. Like sour. I would, say, I would say Parmesan's pretty sharp. Seasoning wise, let me see here. I do onion powder. Mustard, a little bit of this concoction, and then of course some good old S and P. Salt and peppers here. I won't actually be cooking the sauce until after the pasta is done cooking, so we have probably 15 minutes or so until the pasta is done. And that's the biggest thing for me with cooking is the timing of it all, knowing when to put the broccoli on, because if I put the broccoli on too late, then everything else will be ready and we'll be waiting on the broccoli. Or if the broccoli goes on too soon, then the broccoli could turn to mush or get cold. So that's a really hard thing about cooking for me, but just figure it out. Once you make a certain meal so many times, you just kind of know what to do, I guess. Even though I've only made this, what, three times maybe? So. The only other ingredients you need are milk, and that's it. All right, my Instant Pot is about to go off, so it takes about 10 minutes to come down from the pressure. So I'm gonna put the pasta on now, so that way the pasta will be done. I can let it sit for a minute after I drain it, and then start mushing up, mushing, mashing up the butternut squash, getting it mixed in with the milk, and adding the cheese and seasonings. See, timer's set. And then I always cook the broccoli for like seven minutes. So right towards the end of the pasta being cooked is when I'll put the broccoli on. So as you can see, this whole box of pasta fit in this pan. And no, I did not let the water boil first. Alton Brown says to not do that. So pasta is sitting there totally submerged in the water. And let's see. We like our pasta really al dente, so the box says to cook it for eight to 10 minutes. 
So I'm gonna set a timer for six minutes and then it'll probably be done. So towards the end of that is when I will turn the broccoli on. So the way that you typically make mac and cheese and the way that I've made it in the past is first combining butter and flour to make a paste and then you add the milk in until it's all combined and just like a thick liquid and then you add the cheese and the cheese just melts into that liquid. But the last time I made this for Alfredo, I decided to not use heavy cream, which I traditionally do for Alfredo, and I used milk and it actually had that like same type of consistency. I think it was the non-pureed squash. Alexa, stop. The non-pureed squash with the milk instead of pureed squash with cream helped it to have more of that like traditional mac and cheese texture. So why would I waste using flour and butter when I have butternut squash? So that's what we're gonna do to try to cut back on the bad things and but still keep the mac and cheese essence of it. So I just tasted the pasta. It's not quite done yet. It should be done any minute. I have the broccoli going. So pretty much what that means to me is dinner will be ready in about five-ish minutes. All right, I'm gonna try this little pasta again. Perfect. We like our pasta on the more hard side. Al dente. So butternut squash has come to pressure. Take the lid off. Carefully pull the squash out. Don't burn yourself. There are little tools you can use to do this, but it's really not that difficult. So butternut squash is there. I'm gonna save a little bit of my water that has butternut squash flavor in it. So I'm gonna take the squash, put it in my same pan that I cooked the pasta in. This is where I'm gonna make my sauce. Is it facing the stove so you can see what I'm doing on the stove? Babe? What? Is it facing the stove so you can see what I'm doing on the stove? Okay. So I'm literally just pressing the butternut squash with my spatula thing to squish it. So you can see it's very squished. I'm just gonna add milk. Slowly, only like a little bit at a time. And just get that all incorporated be one big orangey liquid. <laughs> so. so how I mentioned, the butter and the milk will kind of turn into a paste. That's exactly what this is doing right now. It's just kind of turning into like clumpy paste so that is good that tells me it's gonna have the same mac and cheese texture that I want I'm gonna add a little bit more milk because you do want it to be a sauce <laughs> again get this all incorporated I could use a whisk but I hate whisks only because the stuff gets stuck in between all the wires and it's annoying Good enough for me. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit. In the meantime, I'm just gonna stab my broccoli to see where it's at. All right, broccoli's good. Okay, so I'm getting close to being done with my sauce, so it's totally fine. Broccoli will strain. Alright, broccoli's good, pasta's ready, just almost time for the sauce to be ready. Just add a little bit of seasoning. I personally 
like a lot of onion powder. Oh, it smells good. All right, so this is thick, which is how I want it to be. Now I'm just gonna add the cheese in to melt. A little bit at a time. So that's about half the cheese. I turned the heat down because I don't want it to burn. So my heat is at like a simmer right now. Just make sure that cheese is melted, getting incorporated, and then add the rest. Oh, it smells so good. And then obviously it's really thick, so you do want mac and cheese to be thick, but I am definitely gonna add some of that butternut squash water into it instead of adding more milk. Just gonna a little bit of the water. And I'll just keep adding more as I feel the need. gives you a good angle to kind of see the consistency so it can still be a little bit liquidier and then I'm gonna add the pasta in to kind of see how it sits on the pasta so I only asked, added in some of the pasta because I would hate to add the whole thing and be like oh shoot there's not enough sauce so see how this sticks oh, it smells so good. all right in my opinion it could be a little bit saucier, so I'm gonna add a little bit more of that water. Just a little too thick. To each their own. Taste it, see how the flavor is? I need some more flavor. Definitely oh. some salt. I'm a salt lover though, so one might say I like to oversalt my food. There we go. Add a little bit of garlic and some salt. Yellow and thick, but not super, super thick. There it is, delicious green broccoli. You can literally see it all steaming. And I would say it took about 30 minutes and you've got tons of fiber. I hope you guys like it. If you try it, let me know how it turns out for you. And if you have any other meals you'd like to see me cook. Have a great day, goodbye. You love it, huh? You think it's so yummy? Say, yum. Say, tasty. Say, yum. Mm. <laughs>